students who came in that morning. That's part of the uh, response that we got. After I made the notification that we were going to shelter in place, I started getting people from Coast Guard, our uh, uh, Valero, or the old uh, PPF refinery. I contacted their people. They came out. Pat Robinson, the fire chief down there in his state, came out to, uh, to help us. And our hazmat team, our county seabird team, they came. We started getting all the resources that we need to try to develop a plan on how we were going to do this. And again, with the winds being calm that morning, it wasn't dispersing the stuff as quickly as possible. Also, the sun was being blocked by high clouds that morning. And that's all the weather, weather forecast that came out that morning. Possibly getting drowsy or dizzy, and then getting in the car and starting the car, which was an ignition source. That was the last thing we wanted to do. That would just have been a public safety nightmare. God forbid somebody went out there, started a car, and it lit this stuff off. With the way it was dispersed through town, we would have had multiple fires, I'm sure. So that was part of the decision making that morning. And so we got to the uniform, the unified command, and we started going through the things that we needed to do to try to mitigate this situation. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Captain Moore, and she can go into more where we are in operations. Thank you, Governor. Just a side note, I'm in five command and spend 12 days with somebody. You get to know them. Um, a lot of you have seen this image in various forms over and over again. The hashed area in yellow indicates those people who are still out of their homes. And just north of that, I believe, is, uh, is a business. Um, it's going to sound a little bit cheesy, maybe, but uh, i got to tell you something I did shortly after the public meeting that next morning. Uh, we pulled off some of the photos uh, from the public meeting, and we put pictures of the chief's grandchild up, and we titled them Faces of Paul's Brony. And we put them all over the campus because we work for you. Bottom line, whether you're a business here, you have kids here, you live here, we're working for you. And I wanted everybody in the command post that really has come from all over the country to work this issue to never forget that we're working for you. So you see the image? Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about where we are. I'm happy to say that phase two site preparation is completed. So all of this structure, these dolphins, the catwalk, the fender, all of this stuff is out of the way. The barge, the green barge is up close to the bridge now. We pulled out the pilings from 1840. Turns out they're a lot tougher than we thought. You remember this image. Um, that's the bridge car hung up in the A-frame. We had to secure all the cars in order to be able to deal with the A-frame. Yesterday, during a meeting, I will tell you, I didn't have everybody's undivided attention, the A-frame went off and we watched it live on the video. I missed it because I was trying to argue. Um, and then we got the car. Today, this bridge rail car is no longer at, on the bridge. Now it's off the bridge, it's on a barge, it's safe in a way. You remember this image? Um, I, I really couldn't, uh, a week ago, tell you all how hard this was to deal with the breach in the rail car, but I have this image to try to explain to you how hard it was. Um, in order to get thousands of gallons of product out of that car, um, we had to get into that hole. That hole, you can't really tell, is about three and a half feet by about one foot. Um, and somebody really had to stick their hand and their arms in there to work the big hose around all of the uh, bolster part of that other car that's in that hole. Um, so that's why it took so long to get the product out. Um, you all familiar that we ended up not being able to reach it all, so we had to back flush it with acetone and then pull that out. Turned out to be a great safe way to do it, but it took a while, and I understand it impacted everybody in this community. So, what happens next? Sequence of events. Car one is done. Um, car two is what we have lovingly named the rocket car. It is the most vertical. Uh, it is the most challenging logistically to grab. It is the most challenging logistically to dive on and rig. 
Uh, at this point, where we are today, we're going to try to dive on that rig and rig that car, lift that car before Friday. I don't know if we're going to make it, but we're going to try. If we get that car, car two, the rocket car, by Friday, a couple of things happen that really help us. Number one, if you see car three, um, there you go, car three, uh, that is just derailed, it's not the water. And it's not a whole lot for that to get seated back on the rails again. Then it's still connected to the gray car, car three, uh, yeah, the gray car right there. So we can pull them out of the way and get them out of the, out of the site. So in everything we do, we're getting safer and safer and safer. The next pick is going to be car four. Car four is the one that's most in the water. And if we can get the rocket car and the other two cars that are on the rails out of the way, car four is our last final chloride car. And life gets really a lot more simple. Um, we don't know if we're going to be able to get all those in that sequence, but if we do, then car four goes next, and then car five is the ethanol car that goes right after that. Um, car five, very much likely, rather than be landing on a barge, will probably be landed on the rail. Uh, it depends on what condition the trucks are in, uh, but that's the decision we'll make when we get a better look at it. This is some of the tools we used. I've got the uh, ability to answer questions later, but I want to turn it over to Jim for environmentals. Okay, this is the this is the science segment of the uh, presentation. Uh, um, I'm Jim Manuel, I'm from the Environmental Protection Bureau of Emergency Response. And uh, we had folks that responded shortly after the uh, initiation of the incident. Uh, they, were down, they were down here in approximately uh, an hour or so. So they very early began working on the incident. At, uh, at a certain point, the unified command was stood up. And we, became, we became a part of that operation. As such, we had the uh, our science unit, our environmental support unit, stood up, and it was a team that essentially consisted of New Jersey DEP, U.S. Coast Guard, Gloucester County Department of Health, U.S. EPA. Contract environmental scientists, NOAA, the National Weather Service, many field personnel, data managers, IT experts. I think you get the drift. There was a lot of people involved in putting together uh, this environmental monitoring plan. The other thing here on the left hand side, and you've probably seen it driving around town, is the EPA's uh, Tiger Bus. It's essentially a, a mobile laboratory for doing air sampling. It's got sophisticated equipment uh, called a you know, GC mass spec in it. It continuously samples and it gives out a live real-time reading specific to vinyl chloride, which again was very important. That, that bus was directed to areas based on a lot of our other sampling techniques. Uh, 45 declined to be tested. Uh, 23 businesses, 56 homes tested outside of the evacuation zone at, at people's request. Um, there's approximately 20 that are scheduled at this time. 8 or 11 homes remain evacuated. Um, and I think the people that are involved in that understand why. Uh, during the process of repopulation, the total number of vinyl chloride detections was zero as they went to houses and, and checked them, which uh, is what we expected, but we were very happy to see that, obviously. Okay, this leads us to our next section. We also requested uh, through Unified Command, the Environmental Unit, uh, conduct sampling of the water at Mansfield Creek. Um, that ended up also including the Delaware River. We also did a well search with the assistance of the uh, locals and state folks that do uh, private water wells, public wells, and we, uh, we found no private power wells in the vicinity. Uh, the Paltzboro public supply wells are located more than a half mile uh, from, the, uh, from the incident scene itself. Uh, we don't really expect any impact due to the depth of those wells. 